Good afternoon, y'all. David Atkins, Target Individual. I'm back with another video. Today, I'm going to give y'all some very important information. I did a video on this before. However, I did not talk about the router situation and the Wi-Fi situation. I'm going to tell you about Stingray surveillance and how to beat it and keep your phone from being hacked by Stingray. And I'm also going to tell you how to lock people out of your router and keep it perfectly safe. I know that's hard to believe, but wait till you hear what I'm saying. It's going to make sense. And it's very easy. And you're going to be like, wow, it's so easy. No wonder they can access my Wi-Fi so easy. So anyway, and I've done it. Um, you know, you have to do it wherever you're at. If you got Wi-Fi, if you don't want to hack. So anyway, listen, I got a word for y'all. And I came over that this morning. Sometimes you have to fight for what you got left rather than grieve over what's gone. You have to fight for what's left because if the enemy gets you grieving over what's gone, he'll steal what's left. I've saw many people hell bent on getting back what they lost and fooled around and lost what they had left. I hope that makes sense to y'all. So I'm going to get into Stingray surveillance right now. <clears throat> Actually, you know what? Most people are Wi-Fi is hacked. So I'm going to start before I get to Stingray surveillance because to do... Well, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to start with the Wi-Fi router. Uh, no, nah, I'm going with Stingray. So and then I'll do the Wi-Fi router. The Wi-Fi is very important information. And anyway, I'm going to leave the link to that information. That's the tape I put over my camera. Anyway, I'm going to leave the link to the information under my YouTube video. That way you can, you know, because there's numerous different ways to access your router. It's very easy. But just wait till I get the information first. The Stingray surveillance device. IMS eye catcher, middle of the man attack, works off of cell phone service. Your cell phone searches for service constantly and is connected to towers. A Stingray device, IMS eye catcher slash whatever I said earlier, oh, fake cell phone tower, is that just what it is, a fake cell phone tower. So what they do is they'll open the fake cell phone tower up or turn it on. It'll start broadcasting. And it'll ever phone in the area will attach to that fake cell phone tower. When it attaches to it, they get your IMSI number. And they, they can do whatever your they want on your phone. They'll take your they take your phone, they'll, they'll do do they'll do whatever they want with it. And that's how it's so easy to hack a phone. It's that easy. And these devices are not hard to get. So anyway, um, here's how to beat it. All right, so if you got a phone. You know, and I can't promise you if I, I don't know the if you're already hacked, I don't know if this will work. However, this information I'm fixing to give is worth listening to. I promise. I'm not trying to get you to watch a video. This is very important information. So anyway, if you do get a new phone, say even if it's a twenty or thirty dollar phone, when you set it up and you're at home, <clears throat> keep your why you after you set it up. You turn airplane mode on, you turn your Wi-Fi on, and you turn your Wi-Fi calling on. And it can't be Stingray, and I'm going to tell you why. Because the airplane mode blocks it from searching the service. So if it's not searching for service, it cannot hook up to no fake cell phone tower. The only way it can hook a middleman attack work is if your phone's out for airplane mode. Then it can work anytime. You cannot block it no other way. Some people say VPNs. No. They can still attack because it's looking for that service to attach to that fake cell phone tower. It's a mimic tower. <clears throat> and also, if you're in a good area, a uh, phone coverage area, and you, and you start seeing your, your 4G, 5G go down to 2G or say E on it, and you know you're in a good our service area, chances are it's hooking up to a fake cell phone tower. Because when your phone drops down to 2G or E, it means it's not in the service area or it's attaching to something. And the fake cell phone tower just puts out enough um, signal to make your phone attached to it. You know what I'm saying? It's not a real, that's why it's called a fake cell phone tower because it puts fake signals out there. So anyway, so then if, you're, if your phone's hacked, this is very worth it if you're getting your phone hacked. So when you go in public, you need to keep your phone in airplane mode. Take it, you're not going to have no signal. But then, every now and then, if you need to make a call or something, take it all out of airplane mode and make a call. So then they really have to be on their 
they really got to wait till you make a call or anything and be there and open that cell phone tower up for it to attach. They really got to be on their toes. So, yeah. So that's how easy it is to beat Stingray surveillance device and keep your phone from being hacked. Okay, another way. Well, you say, well, okay, my phone, uh, what if my Wi-Fi is hacked? I'm fixing to give you a way to stop your Wi-Fi from being hacked. Okay, and I'm having to read off this, but it don't mean I haven't done it because I, I, I have done it. And it's done here, you know. So anyway, here's what you do. Because this is how easy it is to access your router. Okay, uh, and I'm going to put a link in here because there's different numbers you have to put in your browser to do this. See, your router has an administrative Wi-Fi. I mean, your an um, administrative password and login. And all somebody has to do is come in your neighborhood and have internet and type in 192.168.1.1. And I'm going to put all this in the description for y'all. And it's going to say log in. And you're logging in straight to the to the router. Nah, you're not the not. It's the administrator router. I mean, it's, it's to make any changes to the router you want. It's not the Wi-Fi route. It's not the Wi-Fi password. It's the router password. And if you have that, you can change anything. Well, listen, what's listen to this? The username is usually admin, and the password is password. However, sometimes on on the one where I'm at, it was admin and admin. So, you know, you had to change that. But anyway, uh, the, the username was admin and the password was admin. So what I'm saying is if you type 192.168.1.1 in your browser and hit enter, it's going to go to the router login, your router login. You have to be where your router is, of course. Okay, then um, I recommend not changing anything on your internet. Um, or, you know, I'm trying to think, oh, uh, don't change anything unless, you know, I'm going to give you the site and you can go and look for anything that's uh, irregular or whatever. But, you know, once you change that password, it's, you can log anybody else in, the, in that, that's logged in that router out. So, um, so here's some more information. So once you should do that. You log in usually. Usually, the username is admin, and the password's password. And this is universal, so all somebody's got to do is come near your, you know, come in your neighborhood and type all that in the browser, and they're logging into your router. And it's that easy. It's universal. Admin. Usually, the username is admin, the password's password. However, many routers also use admin as their password. So you want to type in admin as a username and admin as the password if you're if the pass if password is not your password, you get what I'm saying. So anyway, and when you change your password and your username, you want to write this down. You want to change your router's password to 28 digits long. I know that seems like a, a lot, but it's worth it because what they do is they break through these passwords and they got these things that send these algorithms out and they'll guess your password and force their way in if you got a simple password. So you want uppercase, lowercase numbers, and all kinds of stuff, but make it. Tw I'm just saying 28 just as a number. However, okay, and then you can change, um, that's what I recommend you doing, changing your router's password, but you got to put your password up where you remember it, you know, so boom, they cannot get in there, because that's usually how they hack your Wi-Fi, it's not through the Wi-Fi password, it's through the router, because once they, and you'll see, once you log in your router stuff, um, like I said, click this link and go and figure it out, and type it in your browser, these different numbers, because you know, you got different networks that got different numbers, and this uh, n this website has specific router login guides, which means if that number I gave you don't work, you it's got the number, like Xfinity router, Spectrum router, AT, it's got numbers for each one. You can go in there and change that, because that's how they hack you, that's how they do everything. They get in through that, because it's so easy. <laughs> Admin, that's the username usually, and password is the password, or admins the password too so you can see how simple it is to get in somebody's router and once they get in your router you know um they can they can do all kinds of stuff you know um they can change uh what channel you're on they can um set up custom channels they can do anything with your that's how they can hack your wi-fi they got total control of your router so that's quick and i hope y'all don't think i'm bullshitting or because I, I know what i'm talking about 
So to keep your Wi-Fi from getting hacked, do this. And if y'all have any questions, please ask me under there. And I'm going to put a detailed description and I'm going to put the link to this because it tells each router what you put in the browser. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, a uh, Cox router, you would type in 192.168.0.1 in your Google search bar, Firefox, whatever, and hit enter. And it's going to say, you know, then it's going to tell you, um, like it even tells you the password you have to put in. Like a Cox router, you're going to use admin as a username and password for password. Then you'll go in there and you'll see a thing that says change password and username. You create your own. See, all these people hack Wi-Fi so easy because they'll go in just like this and they got, it's universal. It's easy. You know? So if I know what web, if I know what Wi-Fi router you're using, or I open my thing up in the neighborhood and I see what kind of Wi-Fi, all I got to do is go near your house, type in my browser, the number for the router that you type in, universal number, type in the universal password and code, boom, I'm in. Then I got control over your internet. So I hope you found this useful. Um, I'm still researching some really deep stuff. I'll have another video tomorrow. Um, so, but I figured y'all needed to know this because a lot of y'all's Wi-Fi is hacked as well. And this will stop it every time. I guarantee it. So anyway, if you have any more questions, I'm going to put this, um, um, or these router codes in, um, this, it's called network. Well, I'm going to put the link in my description and you can click it. That way, whatever router you're using, it's going to tell you word for word how to access your router. And then you, when you access it using the password and stuff they give you, you go in there and change your password to at least 20 digits long, uppercase and lowercase and numbers, preferably. So anyway, that's all I got for today. Y'all have a great day. God bless. And I will be back tomorrow for sure.